gods and goddesses, will someone please think of the minions? My name's Anuki. Fire up them plays. Don't wait. Arachne. Back to the fire giant. Team Red feel comfortable with only Arachne and Zonkwe in the play. Magic Koo powers up with the girdle. But see the Arachne as she pulls the only guy wielding a hand of the god. Infused with immeasurable power from Girdle and Fire Giant, Zongui's recall demons dispenses unbelievable amounts of pain that Team Red can only run in terror at. Killer Santa, bringing Christmas late. Killer Santa as Arachne laid the foundations for this steel, positioning amazingly and utilizing her ability to the max. The two were coordinated, and as a result, this was an epically fast turnaround. Ares. Athena. This is an assault unlike any kind. Athena and Ares against Sobek, Ymir, and Al Kuang, or their combined name, Azamir. It's all about priorities, and first is Al Kuang. Ares is sure to put his high damage output to good use, making Al Kuang reconsider his position in life. Athena tries to make herself useful, but she is slowed to a rhythm of a frozen snail. So it is up to our dearest minions with those new augmented weapons to dish out the damage. Ymir's problem lies with the shield wall he ran into, but the last two are separated. Athena and Ares split up and make this 2v3 look easy. is keeping Artemis and Al Kuang out of middle lane, but soon to arrive from the direction his eyes are not facing, Thanatos. Lurking behind the scenes, waiting for that opportune moment to surprise Plasmas, here he is, and then he takes out Minion 34 with a death sight. A heat-seeking dragon cannon is launched, but the two delinquents dodge and Herbwa counter ultimates. The Dug Trio die within milliseconds of each other in a simultaneous strike. Soon as Thanatos arrives, he takes out the most important ranged ADC. Minion 34 isn't gonna back down. He challenges the Scythe head on. Unstoppable. He ragdolls down the lane tremendously as our lesser heroes cowardly dodge the Spirit's Tempest. Hyrapha still has time to make you look tagging all three heretics. After finding the hole in the wall of magical damage, Herbois zips down his waterway, laying down a vengeful crushing wave. Red Team has turned into fruit for the picking. Neath Mercury and Herbois taking one kill and no more each. Oh, so bad. On. Emelo Witchin has discovered the City of Fire Giant is under attack! His cold blood is about to turn to lava, he finds an opening to dive through and charges directly in for the Fire Giant Steel! His willingness to sacrifice himself to withhold the monstrous power buff from the enemy may just pay off. A tail whip catches all four of Blue Team, but it isn't scary enough. They're gonna continue picking away at Sobek's armor, getting right to the core of his sentient being. Hot stuff still to come though, Cubido blinks and destroys Thor as he window shops and her looking out of position now though some haven't even noticed his presence, the manor and Apollo are slugging out and her dispersers knocking Apollo away, Apollo tries to dive under the spear but takes it to the everything, pay careful attention, the shifting sands and the spirits temper zones, it's a radiant display of saying oh no you don't from Fran. That's triple N. No, 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 you don't. The bags of flesh we call the mid camps protect and her until he can jump to fabulous freedom. He leaves Team Red to clean up the leftovers. Cleanly executed steel with the hand of the god starts the playoff. Sobek not only times it, but has to navigate his way through the enemy with charging prey. Thanks to Emela Witchin putting his team in a less weak position, Cubido the Anher blinks in, leaving his disperse on cooldown in case he needs it. He uses it aggressively to kill Apollo, and that's when Al Kuang arrives to help on her escape. Pay close attention to the positioning of abilities. Al Kuang's intentions are purely to keep the enemy away from Cubido. 
A little bit of life stealing is the best thing you can do until Disperse comes back off cooldown. And another X Factor to the play, the Banish on the Mana. That's some serious assistance across the board. Mimosa fights with the power that the Sand Ninjas taught him. He arrives to lane lane, witness to the shattered corpse of Ymir. Enraged, he launches himself behind Artemis and impales her directly into the tower and minions. Then denies her a basic tank with shifting sands. Thanatos later to send misses. Minion 34 takes another shower of Death Scythe as Anher tactically runs around like a lunatic. 180 Desert Fury with every shot connecting, every critical point in Artemis' body hit. Ymir's still not much help at this point, and her clears the wave, making sure the tower will hit Thanatos, defender of Olympus, no good, Athena dead. He jumps the scythe, turns the pillar, and injects death into Thanatos. Slow-mo breakdown, on her is level 15, Artemis and Thanatos are 19 and 17, yet Mimosa disperses and impales gloriously. Occasionally we find players that show no fear, but never before have we seen anyone do it with such elegance and style. Mimosa 180 twirls himself into a desert fury and proceeds to lay radical judgment, landing every single spear onto the fed like a pigeon Artemis. After taking out the hungry, hungry hippo, Mimosa makes sure to clear the minion wave, assuring tower support when Thanatos dives. Wanting to keep the Scythe user in the tower, the Shifting Sands is born to slow. With one wrong footstep, Thanatos is denied revenge and Mimosa is crowned champion. We've ran out of Minion 34s to slaughter this week. Send in your plays by checking the video description. I'll see you next time. My name's Anuki. I'm going into the jungle.